Hi everyone, my name is Mark Moikins from Big Mount Studio. And in this video, you're gonna learn how to use the searchable modifier in SwiftUI to do searching. Now, I say to do searching because you can use the searchable modifier to do searching or filtering. And in this video, we're just gonna cover searching. In another video, we're gonna cover filtering. Two different things. I'll show you what the difference is. But first, let's dive into the project and take a look at the architecture. Okay, now first of all, I'm using an architecture that's in one of my books called Working With Data in SwiftUI. It's just basically called the Voodoo Architecture. And if we take a look here, you notice there's a chapter toward the end. And I'm just gonna cover this real quick so you guys have an idea of how this project is laid out. Now, Voodoo Architecture just stands for View, Observable Object, and Data Object. And as you can see, that's V-O-O-D-O, -O -O, Voodoo. <laughs> and I have a website on it too. The goal of this architecture is basically to simplify it. Yes, it's like MVVM, but there's no rules around it. Whereas MVVM has a lot of rules around it. This one is just basically says there's three parts, a view, an observable object, and data objects. And actually data objects are optional. You do not need them. Okay, so let's see how this applies to the project. Now in the project, uh, you can see I have data objects up here, and then I have screens, and the different screens, they're all views, and some of them have observable objects. Okay, so if you look at the app main view, you can see that we're using a tab view and we have two views. We have the search view and the filter view. So why did I separate these two? What is the difference between these two? Okay, in my other book, Switch UI Views Mastery, there's this new chapter called Searchable. And I had to do a lot of digging into this subject recently for work. So I wanted to share with you like what I found. And I found that there are two patterns. There's a search pattern and there's a filter pattern. So let's talk about the search pattern. The search pattern is you start with a screen here in number one that has nothing on it. And you wanna do a search and you start to show results as you're searching, as you're typing. And then normally what happens is you tap on one of those results and it brings you to a different screen, right? And that's, that's pretty common. We see that in a lot of Apple apps, like the Maps app, right? So we have our search bar, you start to type something in, it shows the results, and then you tap on those results and it takes some action. It shows you where that location is, for example. So that's search. So let's fast forward to the filtering concepts. And the filtering, I think you'll find this is pretty easy. The filtering starts with data. You start with a set of data and the whole purpose of filtering is to narrow down that data so you don't have to dig for it. So it basically takes existing data, you can start typing something in and it narrows down the results. And then you can tap on it and take some action. So that's the main difference between searching and filtering. Searching, you start with no data, and filtering, you start with data and you narrow it down. So in this video, we're gonna cover searching. Okay, so let's take a look at the search view. And as you can see, it's pretty simple. It's just a navigation view with a V stack and a couple of text fields. And you might notice this looks kind of similar to what we saw in the Photos app example for searching, but it doesn't have a search text field. So we're gonna add that next and we're gonna use the searchable modifier. Now in iOS specifically, you need to use the searchable modifier with a navigation view. It's not just gonna create a text field and put it somewhere on the screen for you to search with. It'll put it inside of the navigation view. So let's add that modifier. And as you can see, we need some kind of property here to bind to it. So we're gonna need a state property or we're gonna need a property inside of an observable object. But as I said in this video, we're not gonna use the observable object. So let's just create a state property here. And it's going to be a string and then we'll just bind to it. There we go. So as you can see, when I added this searchable modifier, we have a search text field in the nav bar. And this is in the nav bar. Okay, now I mentioned that when you do search, you don't start with any data, but as you start typing in the search text field here, you want to show data. So where does that data get shown? You know, where do I put that in the view? Well, the searchable modifier actually comes with another initializer that allows you to add content. And this content will get shown when you start searching. So let's see how that would look. Basically what's gonna happen is, any view I put inside of here will get shown when I start a search. So at this point, we're missing two things. We need some logic that does some searching. We need some data, really. <laughs> so when we start searching, it has some data that we can search through, and then we wanna display the results of uh, what matches what we're typing in, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna pull in this observable object, 
and we're going to get some data. And as you can see here, I actually have a search text property, and then we have a data property and search results. So this data, you know, I'm going to keep this data locally. Like I have this mock service that gets a bunch of data and assigns it to this property. And then as I search, I'm going to be, you know, searching against this data right here. But really, for you, your app, this, that data might be in a database. It might be uh, an API call. Uh, it might be in Firebase, core data, wherever, right? I'm just storing it here. And I probably don't even need to make it published because this will never reach the UI. So I'm going to do this. I'm actually just going to take away that published. I don't need it. I just want to store it locally. And then when I find the matching data, I'm going to assign it to search results. And then we're going to see it on the UI. So let's do this. Let's add this observable object. Okay, so we're going to add a state object here. And I'm just going to abbreviate it as observable object. That's my observable object. A lot of people call it model, but it's really just an observable object. And then what's going to happen is, you notice when we looked in there, uh, we have to get data from somewhere. In this mock service, uh, we can take a look at it real quick here. You know, as you can see, all it does is returns an array of this person data object. And it just has a name, a phone number, an email. And that's it. Pretty simple, right? Okay. And it's going to take that information and assign it to data. So as soon as it's initialized, it gets the data. So it'll get the data when it's initialized right here. So how do we do this? Well, we have this property right here, this search term. And for now, I'm not going to use this search text right here. So let's just delete that. We don't, we don't really need that. And I'm going to use an on change, on change of perform right here. So it basically means anytime that search term changes, that's what I'm going to use, search term. Anytime it changes, run this code right here. So this is your search term. So it passes in the new data of this property here, the search term. So we'll just call it search term again. And then we want to filter that data that's in here, the observable object, right? And then we're actually going to assign it to search results. So it's going to be something like this. So we're going to start with the observable object. We're going to look at the data and then we're going to filter. Now I said we're, there's a difference between search and filter, but as far as this function, <laughs> it doesn't matter. So we're just going to filter it and match any data that contains what we're typing in. So here's what we're going to do. Let me just hit enter again. And this is the data that's being passed in. So we're passing in a person. So it's basically looking at data and saying for every item in this data, which is a person or a person data object, what should be true? If it's true, it gets assigned to search results. So let's assign our condition here. And we'll say if the person, we're going to search on the name, the name only here. So if the name contains what we're typing in, so let's simplify this here. When it contains the search term, then it'll be true and it gets assigned to search results. And then what do we do with that search results? Well, that is where the searchable modifier comes in. It's going to take those search results and we're going to display it. So here's what we're going to do. We're just going to go through each one and we'll say for each. And we're really, we're looking at the search results, right? And in the search results, each one is a person. So let's say person here in, and then we're going to show something. So I have a row already set up. I have this common right here. So, you know, basically the way I set this up, and this is kind of like how I do things at work or on my own personal projects is I have my, all my screens. And I got this idea from someone else. I can't remember what his name was, but I really like the way he set up his project. He has a screens folder and that has every screen. So in this folder, this is my filter screen. This is my search screen. He has all the views related to it. And I put the observable object in there too. I used to separate out all the observable objects, but then I, we found out at work that when it gets really big, we find whenever we're working with the view, we're usually working in the observable object and vice versa. When we're working inside the observable object, we're usually working with its, you know, matching view as well. And so we're fine. We're jumping around the project a lot between these two things. So we decided to keep them together. It's just efficiency. And architect your app any way you want that makes it easier for you because that's the whole goal of architecture. 
making it easy for you. And then what I do is as soon as it has common views between these different views are here, you know, between the search screen and the filter screen, I put them up into the common folder. So normally I would put all the views within that are used within search inside the search folder. But as soon as it gets used in another view or another screen, rather, I move it up into a common folder. And that's where the person row view comes in. This is how we're going to show the data. And let's just real quick take a preview, see what it looks like here. Oh, uh, editor place, placeholder. Okay, yeah, when you have a placeholder, so it means I didn't finish something, right? So let's go back to the search view. And here it is. This is called a placeholder right here. Xcode does not like that. So let's just real quick, let's just use that person row view right there. And you need to pass in the person. So we'll just pass in that person data object. And then we can come back here. We should be able to preview it. There it is. So this is what we're going to see. And where did I get this data right here? Well, that comes from the person data object. And I added a mock function on there. This is something that we do as well for previewing. Like, let's take a look at this person data object real quick. This is the actual object itself. As you can see, it's identifiable, so it works really well with a for each. But then I create an extension with a mock function. So in case I need it for previews or for testing, I could just quickly access this mock function and get some data thrown in there so I can just preview it. Okay, let's resume that. We're not going to see any results right now. And another thing I want to tell you about previewing is if I run this here and I click inside the search, Notice I can't type, right? So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to run it and then test it inside of a simulator. So let's do that now. Okay, so we have our search. And as soon as I start typing something in, what's happening is it's finding matches in the name that has an M in it, right? Now I wanna show you something else. So searching is case sensitive in this case. Like for example, if I enter in a capital NG, you won't see Meng's name come up. I'm gonna hit Command K to show the keyboard and let's force it to be capitalized. If I hit NG, notice it doesn't show Meng. It doesn't also show Chris Ching, NGs and Ching. So if you wanna change that, then just come down here to this logic, this on change logic here. And uh, let me stop this real quick. And then make everything lowercase. So make your search term lowercase and compare it against a lowercase name. That's usually what I do here. So let's make it lowercase and let's make the search term lowercase. That way it's case insensitive. So let's try that again. Okay, showing the keyboard. And now when I type in capital N, capital G, notice it shows uh, Chris and Meng, okay? So that's just one little thing to make it case insensitive. Now I wanna talk about some of the things that you might run into. <laughs> it's not very clear, I haven't explained it yet. And you might wonder why I have this uh, frame max width, max height. Let's take a look. Let's comment that out. It doesn't change the UI as you can see, but what happens when we run it and try to do a search again? Let's take a look. So I come in here, I type in M, and what happened? Where's, the, where's my list that it auto-generated? And that's what it is creating. It's actually creating a list here because you can see these uh, divider lines here and it's indented. It's formatted like a list. Why is it only in the center? You know, I can still scroll through it. <laughs> and so this is kind of this is kind of funny. This is kind of weird. What's happening is this view here in this for each inside the searchable is replacing this V stack right here. And this V stack is only this big. Because when I cancel, you see it's only this big, right? Like if we give it a background, let's give it a background real quick. And uh let's make it red. This is as big as the this V stack is. So when I do a search, it's going to replace just this red content area right here. So let's do a search again and <laughs> sure enough, it replaces just that area. So that might happen. You might be wondering why is, uh, this should be full screen, right? You may want this to be full screen. You should have it full screen. So that's where this frame comes in. We're making the frame as big as the entire screen. And that's why uh, it fills up the screen. So that might be something you run into. And I just want to explain it here real quick to help you through that. It confused me at first. There's a lot of things with search that confused me. 
Because, you know, when we watch WWDC and they show us an example, everything works great. And then you do it and you're like, why doesn't it work? Well, these are some of the things that I learned. So now if we do a search, uh, everything's full screen. By the way, these phone numbers and email addresses, they're all fake. So don't try to use them. Actually, most of those phone numbers are real. And if you want to call them and see who you get, I'm sure it's going to be a very nice person. <laughs> if you do call one of them, leave a comment and tell me what uh, what you found. They're, they're all public phone numbers, so don't worry about it. Okay, and that is how search works. Now, there's a lot more that you can do with this. Like I said, we can move, and you probably want to do this. If you're using an observable object, you probably want to move this into your observable object and have all the you know functionality in there. And I'm going to do that in another video. We're going to use Combine to do that. And I'm also going to create another video on how to do filtering. Filtering is a little different. And again, that's not something they teach you in WWDC. So if you like this video, give it a like and a thumbs up. This video, as well as 200 other SwiftUI videos that go into details on all the things with SwiftUI, are hosted on CodeWithChris.com. Him and I partnered up, and Chris and I have known each other for years. And he's taken over the membership part of the business, and I'm sticking with the book publishing part of the business. All this stuff that I'm teaching you here is in my books, which you have used Mastery. So if you want to check that out, you can get a free book. And I create code picture books that are quick references for you. Because you know what? We all do courses, right? And then when it comes time to using that data, <laughs> we usually forget where we saw it, what course it was. So this picture book just gives you a quick way to find answers. Keep a lookout for my other video, and I'll show you how to filter.